Hello friends, this is Uts, it says so in the Bible somewhere, and today we're answering the century-old question, how do I not suck at Survivor in Dead by Daylight? How am I not a terrible teammate to my fellow Survivors? More people should be asking themselves this question, if you ask me. Uh, I'm sure you've caught some of the memes, or maybe you've seen the video yesterday where I punched my webcam in rage because one of my teammates was absolutely, hopelessly useless and they had the temerity to suggest that, oh yeah, no, I was just doing my thing. It was very frustrating. Do I want this to happen again? Yes, when I play killer, it's great. When survivors do not follow these principles that I'm going to outline to you today, it's awesome for me. I can go play low tier killers with no add-ons and go on massive win streaks because at least one or two survivors in each lobby usually commits one of the sins that we're gonna talk about today. So it's great for me. But I also understand that it's very frustrating, especially when I play Survivor or when I hear it from other people, just how sad it is to have a teammate that just doesn't do their part. And it's also it would also break my heart if you were the person doing this. So I'm going to give some tips that might help you understand what you should be doing at any given time as a Survivor, right? And the way we're going to handle it is very easy. I'm going to reverse engineer it from my point of view as a killer, right? What am I looking at as a killer? Let's assume that survivors have uh, five generators and they're right there, right? In each map, there is actually seven generators, but survivors only have to do five. In fact, it's their only objective. Healing, doing totems, opening chests, that's all very fancy. It does not, for the most part, help survivors at all. They need to do generators no matter what. That is unavoidable. So there's five generators. And we've got four survivors. And we're going to put one in each, all right? And let's assume that we're in a pretty in a pretty favorable situation for me as a killer, where I have caught Dwight in a bear trap or something, and I've put him on the hook, and now Meg is coming for Dwight, she's slowly coming around to help him off the hook, and I am chasing Jake, which I just found, and yeah, this is pretty good. We have Claudette doing generators in the background, however, so even though I've played this pretty fair, they still have one person doing generators in the background, and if this keeps up, and my start wasn't really, really good, I would lose this game. This is what you should be aiming as a survivor, by the way. This is your go-to strategy. At the start of the match, before the killer has everybody injured and on the ground and so on, do the equivalent of one or two generators across the map, and then for the rest of the match until the end, have at least one person on generators at all times. At least one person, that is enough. In most of the matches that you watch me and other killer mints play, survivors do a bit of gens at the start, and then at one point, the killer achieves what they're looking for, which is the pressure point of no return on generators, or PP and RG for short. And this is where you are distracting and pressuring the team in a way that everybody is of generators. Everybody. Sometimes it takes a lot of skill and a lot of good plays to make this happen. Sometimes the survivors do all kinds of stupid things that make it very easy for you to get everybody off generators. And the killer perks and the killer meta right now is geared very favorable in this situation where your perks can help you a lot to make sure the survivors are off generators. Um, in the current meta, at least. So for that reason, we're going to, we're going to talk about how you can avoid this. What's the number one thing that survivors should be doing? That... What's the number one thing that survivors do that gets me close to losing my games or that actually makes me lose my games when I'm trying really hard to win? Number one, split up. Split up. You notice in the example before, I hook Dwight, Meg comes, uh, someone else gets chased and there's still one person in the generator. That is really good. That's because everybody was in a different generator and everybody was in a different part of the map. If... I hooked Dwight, but Meg was hiding in a corner next to him, and Jake was in the basement plundering chess, and Claudette was hiding because Panchi was going on and off in the distance. I don't I, I, I don't I don't even need to play well for the rest of the game. That that team is going to lose itself. At one point, if this keeps going, I'm going to kill one of the survivors. It might take me long, it might take me uh, relatively more or less time, but if they do not do generous, eventually one of them will die. If I have a Mori or if I tunnel someone very aggressively, that's gonna happen even quicker. And when one person dies, let's assume it's Dwight that just kicks the bucket. By Dwight. Now the other three have a much harder task. Achieving the point of no return, the PP and RG, when there's three survivors, is extremely easy. 
All I need to do is hook Meg or even Slucker, leave her on the ground, then go for Jake, and now the other survivor will be forced to come for the rescue uh, of Meg. And that's it. That's it. I do that in three seconds, and now the entire team is of generators. This is a lost cause. This is what you're looking at as a killer. This is what you want to avoid as a survivor. So, splitting up, very important. Extremely important. You want to split up when doing generators. Don't forget that doing generators together gives you a slowdown, unless you're running Prove Thyself. And also, for the most part, please try to split up when healing. Healing with a medkit is as efficient as uh, as healing uh, as fast as when someone else heals you, even if it's a brown medkit. It can be done one or two times depending on your add-ons and so on. Medkits are so powerful for this. You can have one person uh, rescue someone off a hook, go to the generator nearby, and that person of the hook go to a corner, heal themselves, and then jump on uh, and then jump on another generator. Massive pressure on the killer. Doesn't doesn't matter if the killer downs someone very quickly and immediately chases someone else. You will still have someone on a generator. If you're on a generator. Do not let go of it unless you're certain that someone else is on another generator elsewhere. If you're running Kindred, which I honestly recommend, this is very, very easy because if someone else is hooked, you can tell that other people are closer, you won't run their halfway. Run Kindred if you find yourself in these situations. It would also help your fellow teammates when you're the person on the hook, which makes this work great. You can also make sure that, there's, that you're not running the killer towards people on a generator by running Bond. Doing a generator together with another survivor is not a terrible idea, especially with Prove Thyself. Especially if you need to finish that generator super quickly and you're doing it in a clutch, that's okay. But don't forget that if a, a third person comes with the killer behind them, the killer's gonna be suddenly um, pressuring three people immediately. And if there is Ruin, and let's be honest, uh, 11 out of 10 killers now run Ruin, if someone goes down next to that uh, to the hook next to the to the generator, that's a generator that you're never gonna touch again. The killer's gonna stay right there, and he's gonna be able to camp that person to death to watch that generator by itself go all the way down, and do six things at once. You do not want to do that. This is why splitting up is so important, and why you should not um, why you should not be grouping up uh, as a general rule. Of course, we've also talked that it's very important to preserve the numbers. Your advantage as four survivors is huge. With four survivors, it's usually easy, as long as everyone's cooperating, to keep at least one person on generators. When you're three survivors, unless the game is almost over, you will lose, invariably. So how do you make sure that there's four survivors alive as much as you can? Very simple. Do not always be in a rush to heal. If a survivor is dead on hook, and they're very vulnerable, and they want to take a little bit of time finding a totem and using inner strength, or self-carrying in a corner, hitting a couple skill checks and healing themselves in 30 seconds, that is okay. That can be all right. Do not be the guy that takes a, a, a hit, goes to a corner of the map where there's a single generator, they could probably spend 80 seconds on the generator and finish, instead they just heal. W what is it good to heal if you do not do a generator and now you're the final survivor and you get killed anyway? Do not heal unless you're in immediate danger. Do not heal um, slowly if you don't have a, a very fast medkit or something like will make it, unless you're dead on hook. Only heal when it's extremely convenient. You cleanse ruin, let's say, and you're having your strength and you have a minute and gens are going well anyway. And only heal if you're dead on hook. Do not spend too much time healing and bring a medkit if you want to heal yourself. Those that thing do, that will do wonders for you. If your teammates have all been hooked several times and you haven't been hooked, now is the time to rescue one of them with the hook and then go go harass the killer and take the pressure of your teammates. Do not stealth around the entire map when the killer is busy elsewhere. And if your teammates are about to die and you haven't been hooked yet, the killer really has no reason to hook you. If what he what he wants to do is kill those people. And then if you're the last survivor, it doesn't matter if he's hooked you or not. You're going to die regardless. That's the time when you want to take the killer for a few chases, drop a couple pallets and do whatever. Do not forget that the current meta for killers is regression. Some killers will run corrupt, uh, which makes the first few gens blocked. It's a little bit trickier to, to spread out on those. Uh, what I say is use a, use a mixture of stealth, but also get to a generator. You do not want to run to the middle of the map face-to-face uh, -face with the killer and go down in three seconds because if your teammates are being stealthy around the corrupted gens you're gonna the killer's gonna have a great head start he's gonna have a hook at the start zero progress on gens you don't want to do that uh, at the same time you don't want to hide forever unless you're in a team that's super coordinated tournament level uh style 
if you all hide and then the Clavette gets spotted, then she's gonna go down and no one will be on Jens. What you need to do is use the structures around the map to go around, try to figure out where the killer's coming from, listen to terror radios, look around for a stealth killer, and then find a generator to sit on. If it needs to be with someone else, fine. If you are by yourself, much, much better. Uh, don't forget again that Bond can help you a lot to make sure that you're not running into your teammates. Uh, this will help you a lot with uh, with Corrupt. With Pop Goes the Weasel, you need to worry about generators uh, that are close to completion. A generator that gets completed cannot be reverted by the killer. There's still no perk that makes a generator that's completed go back to not being completed. So finishing a generator is very, very, very good. If you're in a corner of the map and your teammates are all far away and you've never been hooked and you need to go down for a generator to pop, pop that generator. Doesn't matter if the killer downs you, he'll have to pick you up, he'll have lost a generator, he'll have to carry you to a hook, hook you, the, your teammates are working on gens or healing elsewhere, and that gen is done, the killer wasted time. Now he doesn't have uh, the ability to pop the gen, hook you next to it later, and keep that gen going. And the pressure on the killer is a lot more uh, a lot more harsh. He needs to worry about last second decisive, last second adrenaline, etc, etc, etc. So, when there is pop, do commit for, to, to those generators a little bit more than usual. Try to hit skill checks, try to get them done. And again, split up. They can only, uh, the killer can only pop one gen at a time. For Ruin, honestly, it wasn't such a big deal. Ruin was relatively easy to find, especially if you're playing with your teammates uh, on, commun on communications, on Discord and so on. But Ruin Undying is very, very, very oppressive. And I can tell you already, the teams that beat me when I use Ruin Undying on my killers are, kill are, are teams that get super lucky with totems, which is not a chance you want to get, or teams that just ignore it completely and maybe then do it later, or just ignore it completely altogether. Those are the teams that have a better chance to, to catch me. Uh, Ruin Undying is a lose-lose situation for you for the most part. You go to a totem, you cleanse it, oh, it was Ruin, now it's elsewhere. You find another totem, oh, you cleanse it, it was Ruin again. You find another totem, well, that was Undying, now it's gone, but you need to find another totem. You find another totem, it's the dual totem, oh well. You find another totem, oh, it's Ruin, boom. By now, you have done approximately five years of totem cleansing. You can probably walk to Harvard and come out with an archaeology degree because you've been into bones for so long. And guess what? Every single time you walk by one of these bones, the killer sees you. And even if the killer doesn't chase you directly, even if the killer is ignoring you, at least he knows where you are, so he knows that you're not coming for the save, or you're, you're not doing a gen and elsewhere. And of course, if it's a stealth killer or a fast killer, he can come right there and interrupt you uh, on your fifth cleanse, and then even though you've maybe cleansed three or four bones, Ruin is still up. That is horrible. There are so many games I've won because Ruin just carries me, and survivors just ignore the generators. If you split up on generators, even Ruin is hard for killers because he cannot physically stop all of you at once. Again, unless it's a really, really good killer, in which case, good luck. So for the most part, ignore totems. If you're in a survivor friends in comms, and you can quickly say, oh, I see a loot totem here, a loot totem there. All right, let's do it at the same time. All right, we got lucky, we got it, two totems, gone. Oh, well, uh, seems like we got unlucky, one more totem, we got it, gone. That can be all right. But if you're playing at that level, you probably do not need this help. That can be all right. Otherwise, ignore the totems, leave the bones alone. Just. Do not touch them. Ignore it. If it glows, it goes untouched. Trust me, it's so much better. Perks such as Deja Vu will probably help you more. Understand which generators are close to each other. Do one of them so that the remaining generators are further and further and further. And the killer by the end of the game has a large area to patrol. That is a much better way to deal with the, with the pressure, right? And with that out of the way, splitting up um, managing hook stages, making sure no one dies too quickly, making sure that you take some of the hit from your teammates and waste the time of the killer. Um, do not be afraid to go in there and go down, even if he picks you up, your teammates do gems elsewhere. And do not get someone killed early, and so on. And how to deal with the killer perks that regress generators, namely pop, corrupt, and ruin slash undying, is basically what you need to do to survive. After that comes killer specific knowledge. For example, um, do not get tormented against Pyramid Head as much as you can. Uh, do not step on grass when you're playing against Trapper and give him a free down, etc, etc. Assuming that you can uh, get that um, over the over the course of your playtime, and assuming that you have that knowledge, you will win in most of your games, and if you go against me, you will give me a very, very hard time 
you know, might even make me lose a game even if I'm trying really, really hard with a killer I'm good with because it is so hard to pressure multiple survivors that are spread out. So if this video teaches you anything, it is to split up and to stay on gens and to try to do as much damage early as you can, which is where you're strongest for the most part, and to try to keep one person on gens at all times. I'm, I'm, very, I'm being very repetitive because it's really, really important. There are so many games where I as a survivor or I as a killer know for a fact that if we had a survivor on and off in the background doing gens, it would be very, very easy to have won that. And it is not that hard. That's how teams in tournaments work. You chase one guy, you down him really quickly because you're very, very good. His teammate comes for the flashy save, you down him too. It doesn't matter, you still have one or two guys in the background doing generators. And even if you pick up those, it, you still do not have time. They use the map, the distance, their numbers against you. So please keep that in mind. I know you need to do archives. I know that you have some perks that you want to use sometimes. But please try to keep this as, as a secondary uh, consideration and do not throw your game just for those and make it horrible for everybody. But before I forget, uh, I don't want to end the video without addressing something. It seems to me, at least recently, that some people at least apparently seem to be upset that I recommend or that I, that I give advice to new killers to run certain strong perks. And I anticipate that maybe some people will also be upset. Maybe some people will type comments like, Oh my god, Ostavo, I'm a new killer. And how am I ever going to win if survivors actually play good? Why are you recommending just hold M1? This is brain dead. Uh, Gen Rushing, how can you endorse this? How can you literally be the CEO of Gen Rushing? Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm really killing it. But what I'm trying to say here, or what I want to address before I end the video is, I'm not encouraging you guys to not have fun. If you have strong perks, on either side, and you have a strong strategy on either side, you can go into a game with that uh, resource in in hand and not have to necessarily use it. If you have a really strong start and you feel like dialing it down a bit because the killer is not keeping up and he hasn't hooked anybody and you do a few gens and then you start opening chests and doing totems, that's fine. That's fun. And if you have a very strong start as a killer and you hook a bunch of people and they all seem really almost dead, but then you want to take it a little bit back because they haven't done any gems and you want to start hooking all of them and giving them more of a chance to get into chase, that's also great. Just because you know what's the most effective thing available doesn't mean you need to sweat uh, your balls off and do it immediately uh, every single time. So please understand that I am just a slave to what the game dictates. If I tell you this is good or this is strong, you know, it's not that I particularly like it. I don't appreciate how survivors have three or four perks that are super solid meta and killers have three or four perks that are super solid meta and deviating from that is, you know, really not a great idea for the most part. I don't like that. I do look forward to, you know, some survivor perks being nerfed, many of them being buffed, and you know, rune and dying perhaps being changed so that actually looking for the totems is a viable strategy and then you can use all kinds of like perks and tools to find totems. I do look forward to that. So please uh, don't take it the wrong way. With that out of the way, I think I can now bid you farewell and hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.